Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on green tea and possible health benefits and risks associated with consuming green tea. So as a brief introduction, green tea comes from the leaves of the plant Camellia sinensis. Green tea is composed of the following. This is according to dry weight. Proteins and enzymes make up 15 to 20%. Amino acids make up one to 4%. Carbohydrates make up five to 7%. Methyl xanthines, including caffeine, make up about 3 to 4%, and some sources say 2 to 5%. Fiber makes up 26%, and polyphenols, so flavonoids like catechins, make up approximately 30%. So again, this is by dry weight, and this is dry weight of a green tea leaf. So it's catechins that I really want to talk about. Catechins are what seem to be responsible for the health effects of green tea. The most abundant catechin is actually a catechin known as epigallocatechin 3 gallate or EGCG. So catechins are actually in other foods and other drinks, but green tea is actually the dietary source with the highest level of catechins. And it actually has the highest amount of antioxidants compared to other teas as well. And these antioxidants mediate many of the green tea's health effects as well. So you we can see here that green tea has a lot of catechins and also has high amount of antioxidants, both of which can mediate health effects and health benefits. So it's not surprising that green tea has been associated with many health benefits. So we're gonna talk about these in this lesson, but as we will see later on in this lesson, there are also health risks associated with green tea consumption, specifically consumption of green tea supplements, which we will talk about later on in this lesson. So the information presented here in this slide comes from this review entitled, Beneficial Effects of Green Tea, a Literature Review. So before I get into talking about the health benefits and health risks of green tea, the disclaimer here is that most of this evidence comes from in vitro data or in vitro studies, which means that it was done in cell culture in a petri dish, so only in certain cell lines, so it's not done in humans, and some other data that was done in animal models like mice. So we don't see many of these studies being performed in humans. So that is the disclaimer before we go on further. So the first thing I want to talk about with regards to green tea and health benefits is its antibacterial effects. EGCG, that catechin that is most abundant in green tea, has been shown to have antibacterial properties. There's actually evidence for activity against the following. Again, this evidence is in in vitro studies. So the first one is actually Helicobacter pylori. We see it done in this study here. Green tea inhibits Helicobacter pylori growth in vivo and in vitro. There's also evidence for EGCG's activity against Streptococcus mutans. Streptococcus mutans is a bacteria we find in our mouth. And we actually see in this study entitled Camellia sinensis or T, implications and role in preventing dental decay, that EGCG has activity against Streptococcus mutans. So it can actually possibly prevent dental decay. The question is, does green tea consumption prevent dental caries or dental cavities? So that is interesting evidence. EGCG has also been found to have activity against E. coli. So there's a question of, is it an effective treatment for UTI? So this study was actually performed in humans. So there's some evidence in vitro that EGCG and other components of green tea have negative inhibitory effects on E. coli. And they also looked at the urinary excretion of green tea in humans. And they actually found that green tea was excreted in the urine. So there was this question of does green tea through its excretion in the urine, could this be a possible treatment for E. coli? And E. coli is an important bacteria that can often cause UTIs. There's also been some evidence showing that green tea may have modulatory effects on multi-drug resistant bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus, and we see that in this article here. And green tea also seems to promote the effect of some antibiotics. Some of these include tetracycline and carbapenems, and these articles are the references. So EGCG seems to enhance the activity of tetracycline, especially in Staphylococci bacteria, by inhibiting the efflux of tetracycline from the bacterial cell, so it can promote tetracycline activity to help treat the infection. And green tea and EGCG has been shown to help modulate some activity of carapenems to help treat beta-lactam resistant 
staphylococci infections as well. So the next set of health benefits from green tea include the possible antiviral effects from green tea consumption. There have actually been multiple in vitro studies that have demonstrated antiviral properties of EGCG. So a lot of what I'm going to be showing here or talking about here comes from these two articles. One, a review article entitled A Review of the Antiviral Role of Green Tea Catechins, which was published in 2017. The other article here is an older one entitled Inhibition of Adenovirus Infection in Adenine by Green Tea Catechins. So this was published in 2003. So from those two articles, there have been evidence Mostly in vitro, there have been some evidence in vivo as well, but in animal models, but mostly in vitro, that EGCG inhibits hepatitis B virus infections, inhibits hepatitis C virus, can inhibit HSV or herpes simplex virus, EBV, HIV, adenovirus, influenza virus, fibiviruses like dengue virus, rotaviruses, and enteroviruses. So again, all of this evidence doesn't necessarily say that these are very, very significant effects, and they are also in vitro in certain cell lines. So again, there are many, many details here in those review articles that I mentioned here that wouldn't be easily covered in this lesson. So if you want more information on these in vitro studies, please check out those review articles I mentioned here in this slide. There are also possible antimycotic effects of green tea consumption. So antimycotic means it's antifungal. So there's actually been some evidence showing activity against candida albicans. We can see in this article entitled Antifungal Efficacy of Green Tea Extract Against Candida Albicans Biofilm on Tooth Substrate. And green tea seems to improve antifungal efficacy as well. So this article entitled Multiple Effects of Green Tea Catechin on the Antifungal Activity of Antimycotics Against Candida Albicans. So it seems that Green tea may improve or increase the activity of some antifungals like amphotericin B against candida albicans infections. So again, interesting evidence, but again, a lot of these are in vitro. There's also been some evidence showing anti-cancer effects of green tea as well. So green tea may reduce risk of some cancers and green tea is commonly used as a complementary in alternative medicine. So what that means is that it's complementary. You use it or others have used it when they're also taking chemotherapy. So don't only take green tea to treat cancer. We don't have evidence to support that. There may be some in vitro evidence to support some anti-cancer effects, but we don't know the actual effects in humans. So there are multiple in vitro, in vivo, and epidemiological studies demonstrating anti-cancer and anti-metastatic properties of green tea. Again, most of these are in vitro and in vivo, and in vivo means in a live organism, but those live organisms are mice oftentimes. So one study here that we'll talk about is green tea inhibits vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, induction in human breast cancer cells. Another is effects of catechins on the mouse lung carcinoma cell adhesion to the endothelial cells. And most of it will be coming from this review article entitled Cancer and Metastasis, Prevention and Treatment by Green Tea. So what we can gather from those articles is that green tea has been shown to have inhibitory effects on skin cancers like melanoma, prostate cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, colorectal cancer. So again, these are all showing some in vitro evidence. So again, in a cell culture dish, that there may be some inhibitory anti-cancer effects from green tea on these types of cells, on these types of cancer cells. Some of these also have been shown to possibly have an associated decrease risk in some individuals who commonly consume green tea. Again, it's a, an association. So we can't completely tell that green tea is actually inhibiting or preventing cancer or reducing the risk of cancer. So again, very important to take away from the slide. There's also some evidence that green tea may have some positive effects in chronic diseases. So green tea may reduce risk of some chronic diseases. So anti-inflammatory effects have been noted in this article here. There's also possible neuroprotection with green tea consumption. 
So we see in this article entitled, A Review of the Role of Green Tea or Camellia Sinensis in Anti-Photoaging, Stress Resistance, Neuroprotection, and Autophagy. So this was actually a relatively newer article published in 2019 in the journal Nutrients. There's another article here as well showing that EGCG suppresses beta amyloid-induced neurotoxicity through inhibiting certain cellular signaling pathways. So green tea may reduce neurotoxicity induced by beta amyloid, as we noted in that article there. So these articles all lead to certain questions. Does green tea decrease the risk of Alzheimer's disease? Does green tea improve conditions like Parkinson's disease? And does green tea have a neuroprotective mechanism that is mediated by activation of autophagy. So that one of those articles I mentioned here shows that green tea can activate autophagy. Does it lead to a neuroprotective mechanism? We're not sure yet. There's also some evidence to support that green tea may have some beneficial effects on cardiovascular disease. So green tea may reduce risk of cardiovascular disease. It is a disclaimer again, because a lot of this evidence is in vitro. So does green tea reduce the risk of ischemic heart disease? So we can see in this article here, tea consumption and risk of ischemic heart disease, that there may be some protective effects. And more notably and more specifically, catechins may reduce cardiovascular disease by the following. They've been shown to have the following effects. So the following effects are from this article here entitled Green Tea Catechins and Cardiovascular Health and Update. One of them is that catechins may prevent formation of atherosclerotic plaques. Another is catechins seem to reduce cholesterol levels through inhibition of squalene epoxidase. So squalene epoxidase is an enzyme in the cholesterol synthesis pathway. Inhibition of squalene epoxidase would lead to decreased cholesterol synthesis. Catechins may also reduce triglyceride levels after eating through inhibition of pancreatic lipase and phospholipase A2. It may prevent platelet aggregation and activation And catechins seem to inhibit vascular inflammation by preventing leukocyte adhesion to the endothelium. Some other possible health benefits of green tea include anti-obesity effects. So this may be due to changes in gut microbiota. So this article entitled Green Tea Polyphenols Decrease Weight Gain Ameliorate Alteration of Gut Microbiota and Mitigate Intestinal Inflammation in Canines with High-Fat Diet-Induced Obesity. So With onset of obesity comes changes in gut microbiota, and at least in dogs, green tea seems to prevent or slow down the change in gut microbiota that occurs. So this could be related to what may happen in humans as well. There also seems to be anti-photoaging effects. Green tea antioxidants are known to neutralize reactive oxygen species that are produced from UV rays. So the question is, does green tea have an anti recall effect? So this article here entitled The Review of the Role of Green Tea in Anti-Photoaging Stress Resistance, Neuroprotection, and Autophagy. We mentioned this article before. This also talks about anti-photoaging. So green tea in the context of anti-photoaging doesn't necessarily have to be from consumption of green tea, but it could be from topical green tea administration. So if you were to put green tea creams on, this may show some help with anti-photoaging or anti-wrinkle effect. Again, some of this data is very preliminary. So we now move on to health risks of green tea. Not everything about green tea is beneficial. So it's actually been shown that high levels of EGCG may be cytotoxic. Again, a lot of these studies are in vitro in, in other animal models. Some in vitro studies have shown the following regarding high EGCG. It may cause hepatocellular damage especially when consuming green tea extract or supplements. So this has actually been shown in some news articles and news findings where individuals who are trying to be healthy start taking green tea supplements and have liver failure because they take too much. So we see in this article entitled Features and Outcomes of 899 Patients with Drug-Induced Liver Injury, the DILIN prospective study supplement that was used that caused liver injury was actually green tea supplements or green tea extract. So they actually could see increases in liver enzymes, so showing liver damage. 
but we don't seem to see this with normal consumption of just plain green tea. So if you were to drink green tea, we don't see the same effect. So because of this possible effect on the liver, it's probably important to avoid green tea extract in supplements. High levels of EGCG may also cause damage to pancreatic beta cell DNA. And we see in this animal model study in streptozotocin induced diabetic rats. And EGCG may cause enlargement of the thyroid gland. It might cause a goiter. You can see it in this article here entitled Goitrogenic Effects of Green Tea Extract Catechins by Dietary Administration in Rats. Again, another animal model. A lot of times these are in animal models, except for that study I mentioned before with regards to the hepatocellular damage or the liver damage. So what are some of the other possible health risks of green tea consumption? So green tea leaves can absorb large amounts of aluminum. And consuming large amounts of aluminum can actually lead to unsafe aluminum intake and eventually lead to anemia or low blood count. So unsafe aluminum levels can actually lead to anemia. So this is actually presented in this article entitled The Role of Aluminum in the Pathogenesis of Anemia in an Outpatient Hemodialysis Population. So that is another possible health effect of green tea consumption. So again, a lot of possible beneficial health effects, but there's also some health risks with regards to green tea consumption. And there are so many other studies on health benefits and health risks of green tea that I likely missed something in this lesson. So if I did, please leave it in the comments below. And I hope you found this lesson helpful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.